vacuum fluctuations don't fluctuate. In fact, the quantum vacuum is, in some sense, as far from fluctuating as it could possibly be. It's static, unchanging. And yet, the oft-repeated statement, the vacuum is filled with particles popping in and out of existence, sticks around, despite how wrong it is. The crux of the mistake is the misidentification of different notions of particle, which, unfortunately, many physicists, including myself, abuse. To be precise, there are two notions of what a particle is, and their conflation is what leads to the wildly inaccurate statements about the quantum vacuum. And just to be clear, I'm not talking about virtual and real particles here. To explain what I mean, we have to get into the nitty-gritty of quantum field theory. But stick around, we're not going to do any mathematics. There are two types of quantum field theories, free field theories and interacting field theories. Free field theories, as their contrast with interacting theory suggests, essentially describe what physics would be like if nothing could interact with anything. An example would be a universe made only of electrons, and those electrons don't repel each other or notice each other at all. The other type of theory, interacting theories, are those where particles care about what other particles are doing. Our universe seems to be well described by the latter. In free field theories, we talk about excitations in the underlying fields as bare particles. One important property of these bare particles is that they last forever. For them to change would require an interaction. Another distinguishing property is that the energy of the excited quantum field can be expressed as the sum of the energy of each particle. In essence, bare particle energies are additive. But this isn't our universe. Our universe is interacting, and in an interacting theory, there isn't even necessarily a well-defined notion of what a particle is. One might come up with a fuzzy notion like long-lived excitations whose energy are approximately additive. We call these dressed particles because they're a bit like bare particles, except they're covered in other fields constantly interacting with them in a self-consistent way. These are what particles actually are. They're the only things that we can measure. So the misunderstanding of the vacuum comes from trying to describe the vacuum state of an interacting theory in the language of free theories. The vacuum always has exactly zero dressed particles in it. No observable properties of the true interacting vacuum ever changes with time. Nothing is fluctuating, nothing is coming in and out of existence. However, if you take the vacuum state of an interacting field theory and then try to mathematically calculate how many bare particles are in it, you'll get a complicated distribution, meaning that if you could somehow measure bare particles, you would get different outcomes every time you measured. But bare particles are not particles, so considering the vacuum state in that way doesn't actually tell you anything about actual particles. All you've done is perform a formal mathematical calculation. The trouble arises when people then go on to explain that result as saying something about actual real dressed particles, and that's just an error of equivocation. As an aside, even if you could do this, the different outcomes wouldn't be because the vacuum is fluctuating. It's still 100% static in this hypothetical. You just get different outcomes because of the nature of quantum measurements of superpositions. You have a certain probability of measuring one bare particle, a certain probability of measuring two bare particles, and so on. No, unfortunately, the vacuum is truly static. Nothing fluctuates in a vacuum except the attitudes of mistaken science communicators, I guess. To explain what I need, me need. <laughs> free field theories as their as their in a language of free th free. All you've done is perform perform.